Hello everybody, Darren here, and welcome to episode 71. It's getting pretty crazy out there in my second Let's Play series for Anno 1800. In the last episode, we continued building up the island of Rush, expanding it out even further, and then working heavily in the new world to correct shortfalls with our chocolate supply. Today, it's gonna be a similar sort of business. We're gonna be building up Rush even further, and then trying to maintain our population as it is fluctuating rather wildly right now. As you can see, the income and the global population is just tumbling up and down. So just really quickly, if we have a look at all islands, we can just see that investor population line just fluctuating like crazy. And that's because they're running out of multiple goods around the same time, draining them heavily, hitting our income big time. So we want to try and fix that over the next couple of episodes. But if we can do as much to correct it this episode, that'll be the... The ideal. Now before we get into it properly, I've done a little bit of an expansion here into Rush, so I've got a very nice, short and sweet little time lapse prepared. Let's begin. Alrighty, so one of the first things I got to work on was the placement of the hospital. Now I was fairly undecided about where it was going to go. I placed it around the city in numerous different places, but then ultimately I was pretty happy when I had it here, because it's sort of like a government building, at least I guess if you've got like public health care, which I like to think here on Rush, they have public health care, so it's sort of like a government building that sits at the back near the local department. And I know it's a bit weird maybe to have it near hotels. I do kind of feel like that's a bit strange, but ultimately I still think the dividing line that cuts between it is kind of separate on its own. And then along that canal, that's a two-width canal, I've placed the tourist pavilions where they can kind of sit and look out over the canal and have a walk up and down it, uh, which I'll get to in just a moment. So then also decided to put down this sort of Again, I can never remember the name of it, but it's like a modular flatbed of grass that's slightly raised, right? And it can have some trees in it. And unlike the other things that are modular in the game, they actually don't have a predefined seed, it doesn't seem. So if you drag it out multiple times, you'll get a different layout for it. Unlike canals, if you drag a canal out several times, you always get, you know, the little divots in the exact same spot every time. Uh, no matter no matter what, unless you make it wider or something. Anyway, use the other pedestrian zone walking path here uh, to kind of showcase and denote like this is like a little canal walk I think it looks really cute um, I got ended up getting rid of the extra trees I was just kind of feeling things out and went with the city lights lampposts as well as a clock just outside the kind of turning point for the uh, the bridge there and the and the hospital so I'm really happy with how that looks it looks really simple really elegant very clean I, I, I think it looks kind of nice uh, then I got to work on moving some extra houses up so I decided to stop moving them and instead just build them and then I can see if they have everything and then I'll just upgrade them obviously upgrading to workers isn't a big deal so that's the way I was kind of going with this just laying out some houses sort of in a semi random fashion but sort of similar to how I've done them in the other cities before creating these little uh, nooks and crevices and crannies that people can walk down towards to get to their houses. Now, old, uh, originally I was planning on putting a zoo here, but the zoo is costing me influence, whereas the botanical garden currently isn't for the first four modules anyway. So I put in a set of three modules. Oh, forgive me, I'm after forgetting exactly what I put in there, but it's giving us a 25% increase to fur uh, productivity. So I don't know what set it is, <laughs> but that's the one I've gone with in there. Uh, so that means just that the fur cabins on the island are even more productive, obviously. Anyway, then just touching up a few extra things here. I was waiting for those houses to grow, so touching up some stuff around the supply warehouse. Just putting in some worker ornaments there as well. I wanted to build out a sort of a fire station area. I realized that we'd only had the one. So I decided to group two of them together and feed a canal down into those. Now, technically, the canal's not actually going all the way back to meet up with the original canal, but you can see it kind of digs that tunnel through. When it's a single canal like that, you see a tunnel that leads underneath. So I like to think it's just coming from the one that's not too far away, you know? Uh, then just dotting around some ornaments in and around the various worker households, as I often do. I decided to put a sort of a central park in the middle of these four, because there's a big enough gap for it, and then just some clotheslines and things like that. But then this is a really nice area, I think, uh, the pub, which is next to the canal as well. So nice big wide open canal for them to kind of sit out, have a drink, sun's shining, people rowing up and down the canal. I think it looks lovely bordering up against that. Again, I think they did a fantastic job with the canals because just, they just seem to border up against anything and look good. Uh, at least it feels that way. And people will kind of walk in between them as well. But I created these little entrances for people to walk alongside as well, just if they wanted to get out of the pub that way. And they do take that road or that path which is nice. Put some bar tables just outside, gave them some trees. There was a bit of experimentation going on again, trying to see which, how wide I could make it. I ultimately shortened it a little bit, but very happy with how it looks overall. Just some nice bar tables, extension out of the uh, pub in a way. Extending out of the pub. 
And uh, yeah, I think that's basically it then. Alright ladies and gentlemen, there we have it, a nice short and sweet little expansion and combined with the expansion in the previous episode, we're starting to really flesh out Russia to this nice upper middle class sort of worker city. I'm really, really happy with how it's coming along right now. So I thought what we could do here at the early stages of the episode before we get into the meat and potatoes of the gameplay is maybe hop down on the ground and have a look around. After all, that is why we beauty build. So we can kind of have that nice zoomed in close up effect and see how things are really all shaping up and coming together. I like to get down on the ground, even though it is a first person mode, it can look a little janky at times. It's just nice to see how the city flows. So we'll try to make it kind of quick. I don't want to spend too long. I know it's not absolutely everyone's cup of tea, but we didn't do it in the previous episode and we've built out two new areas now. And look at that, we have a little gnome. And a picture of old Nate. See, these are the things that you're missing if you don't hop down on the ground. Among, amidst the hustle and bustle of the city, this place is popping off. There is a festival going on in the distance. You can see the confetti over by the mountain. We'll head over to that in a bit. So, of course, we have our church, our market. We've seen kind of all this before. But this is sort of the newer area, the cafe and the restaurant. The sort of Cherry Blossom Park district, almost. Um, Cherry Blossom Cafe, maybe? Anyway, the Cherry Blossom. I guess that's what you could call it. Anyway, we have our bus stop there. Souvenirs to pick up some maybe... I don't know, cherry blossoms <laughs> that you can pick up, seeds, I don't know, uh, or just like memorabilia for being here. And then of course we have the actual outdoor dining area which is adorned with cherry blossom trees and lots of uh, hanging lights and things like that. Then we have the anchor, this restaurant I've actually named the anchor after the anchor that's here, uh, where I live in England. Actually there's a place, there's a restaurant called the anchor which kind of inspired this area in to a small degree. Um, then we have obviously our drink stand and people can wait in either pavilion to go get their drinks and then we can turn around and head into the Cherry Blossom Park itself. Chill out in one of the, totally forgot what these things are called, gazebos I guess kind of. Chill out one of those, grab our newspapers. This one I'm a bit of two minds with, it's a bit far in to be selling newspapers in the middle of the park but I guess it kind of, is, it kind of fits, it's alright. Anyway I'm very happy with how this has come together on the ground because it really does feel like you're walking amidst the cherry blossoms and the orchards, which is what I wanted. Now, I have to jump to get off the path. Um, but it's cool, isn't it? I think it looks really cool, the way you can just go from one to the other, and it's like, yeah, this is properly what I envisioned when I first set out. When I said that I want to have some sort of cherry blossom park, it's worked out pretty well, I think. Now, we'll just hop into postcard mode by pressing F1. That just gives us a sort of a nicer overview, not all the graphical oddities that come with being right down on the ground. It gives us a nice little view of the city there. And then here as well. So I'm loving it. I know it's my own... Well, I, I always am off two minds. It's like, I did put it together, but it's the art in the game that is the thing that I'm always saying looks really good. You know, and I'm like, oh, this looks really good. I may have configured it in a certain style, but really I'm complimenting the artists and the development team because it just, it all looks so good together, you know? It's like they've done such a great job that I find it relatively effortless to make things look nice in the game. Um, so yeah, so that's a little area there. Let's just hop back down if we can. I will go visit. I actually change my sensitivity every time I do that, so I get confused. We'll just hop back over. So we've got our warehouse, warehouse. then collecting everything from the orchard. It's got a canal that leads all the way back up to the main source of water. I'll turn the corner around here. We've got our two fire stations now. They've got their own canal as well. This one's a bit more underground. It just connects over to another one over there. And it doesn't actually, you don't actually see it leading all the way back up to the main one, but I like to think it does. And of course, that is for our firemen to be able to douse any fires within the city. He's off. He's in a hurry. Jeez. <clears throat> uh, so what do we have then now? We have obviously the school and our little playground on the, at the back of the school there. And the festival's reigning supreme over that way. We don't need to go check that out. Got little houses tucked in over the, um, the different canals. Love to see. Little cat. Make sure you don't get hit by that um, horse. All right, and somewhere down here, oh yeah, of course, I forgot actually, the newly built area, the now Botanical Garden. So we have our lovely Anno Union billboard, the Botanical Garden, a nice little walkway that we built in the time lapse to sit out and enjoy the spectacle of the canals. This is where the, thick, the canal is thicker, so people actually sit alongside it now. And they have our nice pathway that leads straight up to the hospital and to the local department and the hotels, of course, where people are crossing over. 
And then we can go through an underpassing. I have to figure out where that's going to lead to. It doesn't have to go in a straight line. I don't mind it having a corner somewhere, but we need definitely an exit point. I haven't got one yet. <laughs> um, but then, yeah, we've got our botanical garden. Just in there, we've got a couple of things. Nothing too crazy. We'll just hop back into postcard mode here. Place is packed. Oh, well, they're going mental because I'm after setting off fireworks. And then last but not least, we have our little tucked away... Um, what's it called? Uh, pub. I'm actually really, really happy with how the pub has come together as well. Because it's against the canals. Again, just compliments to the development team. The canals look really good, so things are just fitting right next to them in a really good way. So I like to think they're just... It's. I'll just hop out. It's better to look at it from this angle, I think. Like, look at that. I think it looks great. All the people with their uh, benches and stuff right next to the canal. The boats going up and down. I've noticed they definitely struggle with those little bridges. They don't seem to be able to get through them. But they try nonetheless. And then they just kind of turn around. But either way. Oh, look at that. And the little, um, you could just imagine all the crap draining out of the pub. Maybe into that little, uh, into the canal there. <laughs> Although, you know, I guess there's rules and regulations trying to keep it clean. All right. That's going to be it. Wanted to have a little look around. I'm glad that we did. And I know that some people often ask me for specific layouts and stuff, and they want to see, they want to recreate parts of, or just ideas and stuff that I've had, so hopefully that gives you a better feel for it as well. You can get some snapshots if you wanted to try and redo some of these things. Uh, so, let's look at the situation. We've got 580 farmers on our connected peer network. We've got 189 workers, and we also freed up 20 more influence because the newspaper ended, so that was 10 influence I got back. But then, actually, there was a trade union here with nothing in it, and I must have just left it there for a long time and not noticed. You to uh, so that gave us 20 influence back. So we're, we've got 47 now, doing pretty good. Pretty good. Get a few more shifts if we needed to, or more trade, or relocate that trade union or town hall somewhere more important. And the town of Rush itself is getting increasingly smaller. Someone asked, am I planning on getting rid of this? Yes, the, ultimately the goal is to move the entire town somewhere over here and have it kind of extend further down, further down this way and kind of go from... Really, it's to go all along the canal, right? The canal is cutting across from coast to coast, so it's like, okay, I want the town to be like pretty much all in that space there. And uh, as much of it appear, and then build up the stocks to look a bit nicer too in the future. So that's going to be that. And then once we're done with that, we'll head back over to Swords and we'll try to fix all the ongoing issues that's happening here, which we can see right now. We're having some issues. Oh, the citrus has run out. So we've got loads of problems over here. Unlike the previous episode, I haven't written everything down to try and go through things one by one. It just looks like I can click this and look at a variety of problems happening. So we're short on glasses, short on coffee, cognac and billiard tables. Now the cognac and billiard tables, I think I'll leave for a bit. It's a complicated one to solve. But the glasses and coffee, I think we should be able to fix. Now, what's your problem? You're after running out of citrus. So let's try to get them back online so that we can get the tourists back up so we can get the restaurants operational. Uh, properly because obviously they slow down don't they without the proper workforce I say that actually I don't know what the like this is operating just fine isn't it every minute it's still doing its thing 120 customers I don't know if they operate the same way so basically if you had if I was running short on workers this would stop operating as well you know it would like its productivity would slow down which is funny actually it's not doing anything anyway so we'll just pause it oh i should press l sorry l will let you see what's operational what isn't so we're out of stuff here in this drugstore citrus is gone but yeah strangely enough these restaurants seem to be still operational ah but these ones don't maybe they need something oh they need citrus they all need citrus <laughs> yeah uh, anyway long story short i just thought like oh they wouldn't be operating if they were so negative in the customer pool but maybe it's because they're not they're missing goods that they're offline anyway not too sure well, let's try to figure it out. So, citrus. Let's, this should be an easy enough one. Let's go all islands. Agricultural products. Scroll down. Citrus, we are providing just about 36 to 36 consumption. Although, not everything is being produced. So, let's see where we're producing it. We're making citrus in Rush. Which is currently fluctuating in terms of capacity. This is only at 11% productivity. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm after clicking into the wrong thing. I clicked resin. I'm oh, sorry, I clicked the right thing. I just looked at the resin orchards because it came up in the same list because obviously orchards can switch. So my bad. Anyway, sorry, the orchards for citrus, Guadalmina, Marbella. So only two islands. 
where they're being produced. And these ones are stopping. So my guess is they're at capacity. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now, in the last episode, I think I added several ships to go find this citrus. and Or I added more ships to the citrus route, wasn't it? That's what I did. So I said, yep, you guys can all carry citrus and all carry camphor wax. You should never be running out because there's four of you all doing your thing. And for the most part, it seems like it's correct. So we'll have a look here. Citrus is being produced 700 in the island of... Uh, sorry, Port of Anus. I'm after forgetting the whole island's name. And then basically, citrus is being produced as a byproduct, I think, in Marbella. And then we're producing it properly in Guadalmina. So this is the island of Guadalmina. Citrus is being produced here. No more space here. Camphor is full. So how much... We can only store 500. Okay. Well, we're obviously just not collecting it enough. Increasing storage isn't really going to fix that. You should go sit in the shade, boss. Yeah. All right. Hmm. I'm just trying to think, what's the best way to maybe, like, sort this congestion out? Because that's really what the problem is. We're producing just about enough, but there's congestion. There's some sort of underlying issue with the trade routes. Let's check on this ship. Sugar. And this ship. There's a lot of waiting going on. Now, that might be because ships with cam for yeah, wax yeah, alive, guys. wait oh, no, to unload. And I think it just takes a while. For loading speed. Hmm. Now, what about the ships collecting it? I guess that's the other, the final problem. So, there's three ships that collect it and bring it back to the old world. But maybe these should be separated out into their own routes. Because citrus and cam for wax especially seem to be really in high demand so maybe a ship that goes around just collects it and brings it back would be the best situation here and then we could just increase stuff like coconut um etc you know this is actually taking 100 citrus back so it is trying to empty out the island faster if it can but then as soon as it gets we just saw it was on 700 now it's back on 800 and then this huge congestion here is this everyone waiting for it's a bunch of different things really there is a free oh that's for coffee and that's for that. Hmm. And what are you doing? Cotton? Man, there's a lot going on. It's tempting to put down a harbor master office to really speed up the loading. Because there's just no more room for more piers. You could put piers out here, but I don't think it would really... I don't think it would work right. Because people... Chips are essentially coming in from here, and they're heading out this way anyway. To these two islands. So I know I'm taking a while with it. I'm just trying to really articulate my thoughts and speak out loud and try to figure this out without just getting blinders on and not seeing some obvious solution, which I'm sure is happening all the time. So initial thought running through my head is, well, maybe you could just get rid of the exclusive resource one, right? I like the idea of having one just for coffee because they'll just use that, but it's not being used very often. That's my only thought there. It's like, well, if it's not being used very often, then maybe we don't need it there. Multi-regional coffee ships. So we've got three coffee ships that go to, from Porto Produce to Marbella to Lusk to Crown Farms to Lusk. Yeah, I don't think it's. I don't think with three ships delivering coffee like that, it's that imperative that we have it wait. I don't think so. So I'm gonna change that and say, look, it's fine. So anyone can load and unload on that now if they want to. And the load and unload speed is actually increased to four over two. So it's doubled. So that's actually sections. pretty good. Might fix things. And uh, maybe do the same with this. Although the agri route is so popular, I do feel like ships are going to use this quite regularly. So speed that up. Uh, let's have a look at citrus again. Cinnamon. Coconut oil, coconut oil. Oh my god, where's the citrus? Oh, actually, sorry, it doesn't get produced here. It just gets dumped here. Okay. Um, citrus. New World. So, New World Root Citrus. Let's see. 850. So, it is maxed out. Still. 50 on that, 12 on that, 33. So, are you picking it up at Guad... Yeah. And then you're going to Guadalmina. Guadalmina. 
Does that make sense? Pick everything up in Marbella. Dump it there. No, not really. It doesn't make any sense to do that. Hmm. It's just against my better judgment, I think, to make this all one route. But I guess I have the ships available, so shall we just do that? Wish I had a live chat so you could tell me. But I guess so. Citrus and Camphor Wax seem to be the ones that produce the most. It seems to make sense to put them on their own routes then. It simplifies things, and everyone's moving around a lot of goods at once instead of combining. Now, my ultimate goal is just to free up the ports so that they're producing all the time. That's really what we need to have happen. And I know consumption is really high, but it shouldn't be that high. Um, another thing that will fix that is I believe I'm using too much consumption down in the factory island here of Lusk. So I think that... What are we using here? Yeah, oh, that uses resin. Citrus has been used to make lemonade. And we're making a lot of lemonade. So let's have a look. Consumer goods, lemonade. 13 to 10. So we do need to kind of make that then. Hmm. I can't really remember what else it's used in then. Just recipes, Fire isn't it? So Fire's out of control. In the Arctic. Oh, God. How thrilling. I have to wait until it's over. Alright, yeah. Sorry for dilly-dallying. I guess I'll just do that. I'll commit to it, okay? So, let's go, with, let's go with making a citrus root. Everyone's pretty happy, though, generally. Which is good. So you've got your 50, but you can't dump it because this place is full. Oh, no, you can. i got to change this to just citrus so I can see it. There we go. So now it's almost full, 800. And it's going to wait on the next ship coming in, picking it up. Yeah. All right. Yeah, again, sorry for taking so long. Ultimately, there's two problems, right? It's the fact that ships aren't coming around picking this up enough to keep production flowing uh, often enough. And the other one is that not enough of it's been even taken away back to the old world fast enough. So it's just we're just congested. We need more ships or we need to make a dedicated route just for citrus. So we'll do that. All right. So create a route, trade route. Uh, this is just going to be a citrus. So this will just be in the new world, just citrus in the new world to here. And then we'll make another one that just carries it out. So I'll name it af after actually, but let's just stick on a ship. Any ship at the moment doesn't really matter. And we have to collect it from here and here and then bring it there. So take as much as you can. Take as much as you can and then drop it off. Simple as that. That's all you're going to do. And just stay in the new world. All right. The next route, very similar, but just take it out of there then. And you might be like, well, why not just take it out with the one same ship? I prefer not to have ship. I, I like this method of having one port be the kind of focal point for everything to be dumped into. And then that port's the same port where you take things out. Admittedly, it does get congested with um, getting backed up on the piers. But it does make, it, it cuts down all that travel time, that uncertainty of the travel time between regions and stuff. Uh, so I feel like it kind of works that way. Otherwise, I feel like the time it would take to produce, you know, the same 300 will be much faster, or it won't be very faster. It'll happen more often unless you add a second ship to the route. So it's the kind of the same, same sort of problem, but I like just logistically dividing it up into two different routes. I just think it's better that way. And then you could do the... If you really wanted to, you could do those ships that travel faster between regions if you really wanted to specialize it that way, I suppose. Um, anyways, so citrus again. All citrus. Da, da, da. Fix. The African Queen. This is going to be New World to Old World. Okay, so that's done. Now I have to do that again, but for Cam 4 Wax. So let's go bump, bump, bump. Cam 4 Wax we do actually produce too much of, I believe. Cool. All right, good. And just keep that in the new worlds and say, yep. And then make another one that takes it out.
And this way, no goods are being dependent on each other, right? Uh, so I'm not splitting the goods between the ships. I'm out of ships now. I'll have to unassign some of the ones that I have free, but I might just uh, add this one on for now. Just hit accept, but I have to go back into that, click this, and then... Ah, oh, you just went out of the region. Damn, I was going to just take that item off. Oh well, whatever. It's gone forever now. Bra basically. Basically. Uh, right, and this is going to be Old World to New World. I will name them appropriately now. So that's already on the go. Um, now, the agri supply route that's going around collecting, anyway... We could, let's just take these categories off then and just leave it as is. Uh, maybe then get rid of a ship off the route. Anyone will do. And I might add something to this, you know, depending on what looks like it's being backed up. Nothing looks like it's being backed up. Maybe sugar, maybe. So we'll add on the sugar, I guess. Is that a refined thing, is it? I think it is. So we've got a free slot on that if we want to do something else with it. Now I need to change this and dump the stuff that was in the middle. Hold the crane. So I'm just going to have to dump it, unfortunately, just to make things life easier on me. Alright, so those ships are free. Good to go. And then the last thing to do is the ship that's um, going new world to old world and bringing back citrus and all of that doesn't need to be there either. So let's get rid of these. Uh, I'm surprised I'm not taking sugar back on this route, but I guess it's probably on a different one. New world to old world. Is there no sugar coming back? That's insane. How is there not? Because we use sugar in the old world for all sorts of things. Oh, there's a specialty route that does it on its own. That's why. Um, okay, well, I'll just leave that as is then. And then again, we're going to have to just throw these things overboard if you want the incorrect symbols to go away. So there, that ship's in transit. Might just have to stop that route completely then. So just stop, stop, stop. This one's right here, okay. All right, you can get back on your route. I know this is really micromanaging. Hopefully people are able to follow along and they don't mind. Uh, what about this one? Hold the crane. Yeah, whatever, just dump it all, it's fine. And then get back on your route. And then the last ship, which was in between sessions right now, we'll just have to wait until it's out. There it is there. Okay, so I think that'll clear it up, I think. Although it does seem like we're cutting it very fine for the amount of citrus we're in demand of. Like we're basically only barely producing what we need. But we can leave that for a while. I might just have a look down here now again. And see like once these ships get to their places we should see the consumption rate and production rate always stay in play. Uh, but we definitely need to find some items to speed up loading and unloading. Just as well. Alrighty, so that should be one problem. I'm hoping what well, that's going to fix citrus problems, which means this place will start running again properly, and it should be okay. So that's one problem. The next one was glasses. Actually, before I move on, sorry to dwell on this even longer, but I do want to name the route correctly. So new world to old route, citrus export. That's what we'll just call it. Just because... Uh, yeah, uh, well, if I call it exports citrus, just to keep the naming conventions right. Exports citrus. And it looks even better if we just do it like that. Did I not set up the route for exports? Let me just have a look. Camp 4 wax? I guess not. Oh, I put it in the wrong category. That's why. New world to old world. Alright, cool. Exports... Camp 4 Wax. Done. Alright. So, 
doing that um, should clean things up a little bit. And then just in the new world, we just need to name it as well. So that's Agri Supply, Agri Supply 2. I'll call this Agri Supply Camp 4. My therapist says money matters dominate middle age. And I'll call this Agri Supply Citrus. Okay. Let's just buy back that share from ya boy. Alrighty. So there we go. So those routes, I'm hoping, are somewhat fixed. And in a few minutes, we'll check back in and see, like, in this in this statistics, if um, we have freed up those things to actually do their job uh, correctly. Now, that did I, I've only added one ship to those things, so we'll see. I don't know if that's going to be enough yet. I suppose what you could do is have a look at how much you globally produce and then see, like, well, is that about enough time to make it? So we make 36 per minute. That's quite a lot. So in just under 10 minutes, I suppose we fill a ship, right? So it's about, it's a question of, okay, then, does that mean one ship is enough to take it between sessions? Probably not. It probably needs two. They both are making about 36, actually, which is kind of interesting in itself. Um, but we did just free, took, take ships off that route, so we could add more back onto it now. So this one, for instance, the Nest Cafe. Just go to it. Dump that. So Nest Cafe, except so two on each route should definitely do it, I think. Have to make another ship though. And then if I notice later on that, you know, too many is on one route or something, we can just reduce it down. So not a big deal. Boom. All right, so glasses is the next thing. What's the deal with glasses? We seem to be lacking. Um, now, it's been a while since I've done this. I can barely remember where they are. Requires brass spectacles. Welcome to the manufacturing. Lots of brass, lots of glasses. I guess just globally, maybe we're just a bit short. Yeah, we're two tons per minute off. Now, in Crown Farms, we make some. One of them is not operating at full capacity. Why is that? Because we're full up. Interesting. 100 um, engineers. Hmm. Question is, do we want to build another one down here or not? It's a surprise inspection. I think brass as well can largely be removed. So maybe we could just add more glass spectacle factories down here now spectacles that are here i don't think we have it globally kind of being moved around i think there's they're kind of siloed between the sessions so i guess i'll just check glasses so old worlds we've got glasses there and that's regular glass Embesa to the old so we're sending some to Embesa, and that's it so we're not dealing with anything in crown farms so the crown farm section is separate which means that we need to turn on all islands, but maybe just hold off on anything in Cape Trelawney, and then we can get a more accurate look at where we're where we're at. So we're four tons short. We're only two turns two tons short if we include it. Um, maybe I could just make a specialty route for it. Another ship is needed though. But ultimately, we need to make a factory somewhere, either here or in. I mean, here we've obviously got loads of engineers, and there's actually room. So yeah, I guess we'll just do it here. It might even be covered by the trade union. I was going to put it in here. It is. So that worked out pretty well, actually. Because it wouldn't fit there. It wouldn't be covered. Unless I could just actually... Yeah, we could keep continuity and move these down. Just to see. These are veneers, right? Yeah. So we've only got one tile of space. And we need four. So it's... Although, maybe... Let's just cut that. Let's just see. And it's a maybe. Oh, just won't fit unless I pushed it up one tile, but I'm not going to do that. So I'll pop it in there. I think that's fine. So let's just kind of put this back the way it was. And actually, does that fit over here? Let's just see. Yes. So we're just off by a gap of one, to be honest, but oh well.
I wonder, does that leave us room to, if we wanted to, get something there? No. For the same trade union. We can obviously put something in there if we want to, though. Right, so that's going to put extra strain on our glass production, or, uh, glass consumption, which is kind of tight, and brass. Now, both of those things I think we get from Docklands. So, brass I think we get from Cape Trelawney. Uh, glass we have here for gold. Now, I can't remember how much gold we need, but what I'll just quickly do is open up the old calculator and see all islands. Well, let's just turn off these. Consumption of intermediate glass. So it's 49 tons per minute is the consumption. There's no production here. Let me just, I gotta check one other route actually. Was glass coming in this way? No, it's not. So glass isn't coming in either. All right, good to know. Let me just double check my dock lens so I'm not pulling in glass from somewhere else. No, it wouldn't be. It's just here. Okay. So if the consumption is, what was it, 49? And it's about 23 minutes, I think, for Lusk, for the guy to come around. That means we now need 1,127. There or about. And we can look at the previous trades. It's always been accurate. So it's going to be a question of whether we can maintain that gold. I don't have my Excel sheet open anymore, so I don't actually know. But I think it'll be fine. We'll find out. We'll just notice it'll be going down slightly. So we'll find out in 14 minutes, that's when the next trade's gonna happen. Uh, so, now that our route's been active for a little while, let so that should fix the glasses problem, right? We've just put down an extra building for it. I think brass is fine. Um, if I'm not mistaken, brass comes in through this Docklands at an exorbitant amount. Yeah, we, we fill the place up by selling the rum. So about 850, maybe you could, if you wanted to highball it and say that's how much comes in. And if you wanted to look at that, then you could be like, okay, well, what would be 850? 748 rum. But we've just added more to it now, to the network. So I'll just keep it the way it was. It's fine. And we'll see if it maxes out. All right, man. That's a lot of stuff. Now, that population is still fluctuating like wild. We were up to 100,000 at one point. We're at 91,000 now. So the goal is to kind of get that back to 100K. And obviously, we're going to be redesigning the city and try to maximize it a bit more in future, too. Um, but this should improve glasses production to, to step up. Next one over is going to be coffee. So let's look globally at coffee and see how we're doing. Now, coffee is produced en masse in... Uh, Cape Trelawney. Sorry, I must have gone past it. There it is. Yeah, so we do produce enough. We're just not delivering it properly. Strange problem to have. So let's just switch out some of the construction material, which is all fine now, and stick on this. There we go. We have 144 in the in the bank on swords. So let's look at our coffee route. There's a bespoke, specific route just for coffee. So coffee goes from Porto Benus into Marbella, into, which is only a small amount actually, and then into, really it goes into Lusk. And then the ships head out to Crown Farms where they collect another 300 and they drop it again. So there's 2,500 down in the island of Lusk. So it's obviously just a problem with the trade route delivering it up. The demands must have just slightly exceeded the amount of ships we have on the route doing that. Um, so in the Old World routes, we have Lusk to Swords 4. So every time these ships come down, they actually fill up. And they're all right behind each other. So we're delivering batches of 400. Sorry, 200. Only 200, yeah. Delivering batches of 200, but it's just not enough. Hmm. Again, you could be lazy and add another ship to this, or you could say, well, look, coffee is just being consumed way higher than other things, so maybe it needs its own route. So the coffee consumption in swords is 46 tons per minute, whereas pocket watches is five. So having them on the same route just doesn't really feel right, you know? Kind of want to combine the ones that need the most ships if you're going to combine any. But coffee is so in demand, it might just need its own thing, I think. Uh, so maybe we'll just take one ship off, take coffee off this route for now, accept that. I'll get back to that in a second. 
make a new route, trade route here to here, and just be coffee. Just coffee only. Just one ship. Now we're not delivering at batches of 200 every cycle, we're delivering batches of 300. So that should be enough to keep them happy, right? Although technically, yeah, no. Yeah, and the ships are going the same speed. Because they're still going to be full. So just throw all that overboard. What a waste. The speed of time, let's see it go pick its stuff up. Which is a very awkward pier to go to. It could have just been right next to itself. All right, there we go. 300. Yep. Loving life. New ship has just been constructed. Nice. That's for the uh, citrus route, isn't it? Yes, it is. Off you go. All right. So I need to name that coffee route. So that's an old world coffee route. Uh, that's Lusk. I'll just save it like that because I don't know what I've called these. I want to keep the names the same again. So Lusk to Swords. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, seven. We'll just call it Lusk to Swords 13. My favorite number. Is there a dash? There is a dash, of course. And I spelled swords wrong. All right, cool. There we go. So a lot of finicky logistics here, but I think we sorted two things out anyway. <laughs> One ship, I think it should be enough as well. Um, it's got the propeller on it. Like I said, though, it'd be nice if you could get some items for the loading and unloading. The propeller is pretty good for moving and then getting items then for... And I know I can make them in the Research Institute, but they, they do get more expensive every time you make one. But I guess we could queue, queue, queue up a few. The picture I'm looking for is a woman like this. So I guess what we could do is just go items. Uh, have a look at, let's just go loading speed. These are all the ones that affect loading speed. So she's the one I often go with. We've got 16 of them. Loading speed, 45%. She has loading speed, 60%. And let's see if you're not the ones that... So we've got two of them that aren't even equipped right now. Where are you? One's in swords. Oh, okay, we can go pick that up. Uh, what have you got? Loading speed 30. Batteries. Loading speed 75. Cargo slow down 100%. Wow. I mean, I guess we could just queue up a few of these in the Research Institute. Why not, right? Queue up as many as we can until we reach the max threshold. And then we'll just have to source them ourselves. Research rating should be high enough to headhunt them. So that's the most we can afford, because we can't ever afford 90,000. We only store 80, isn't it? Do we? Actually, I think we store 90. So they're all in the queue, working their little hearts out now, grabbing us Hans, Hans Eichendorf. A wholesale success. 75% loading speed, it's pretty good. And then cargo slow down negative 100, so he's pretty powerful. Start throwing him on some of these big routes that we have, you know, these really big clogging up your whole network routes. Um, and we still have the engineers to be able to work that, and it takes nine minutes for each one. But it, while we're waiting, let's just do a few rolls over here and see if we can grab some in the meantime. I feel like I get so unlucky with these things. What about this? Productivity. It looks like her. It's the same face, just different background, I think. Oh, by the way, um, Anno tweeted out recently something that I might have looked at it before, but I, I really didn't remember it until I saw it again, uh, which is there is a high score screen in the game now. Not that I think I'll be winning any awards there, but um, I thought I'd show it off anyway and see where we're at. So if you press J, I think, by default, to look at your achievement, excuse me, achievements, you can go to high score. There I am, Darren Total War. It's my Ubisoft name. Please don't add me. Um, if you want to get in touch, though, just join my Discord. Speaking of Discord, actually, we have a new link, discord.gg slash ROP. Please consider joining it. Trying to build a bit more of a community over there. Got some bots into the server. There's kind of this meta progression you can have now. If you are a channel member, you also get other perks. You can join the Senate House and see a bunch of things. I've decided to reduce the amount I stream to focus more on this series as well as other Let's Plays that I want to get doing because streaming just doesn't do as well for me as these Let's Plays do. So I'm pivoting 
and focusing way more on this. Probably way too late to make that decision, but I've got a decent amount of people over on, on Twitch that I didn't want to like just completely neglect. It was a tough decision to make. But anyway, because of that, then I wanted to focus more on building community on Discord uh, because I was I felt very in touch with my community on Twitch, but now I'm going to try and build Discord a bit more. So uh, try to make it a, a nice, fun, and friendly place for people to chat. Um, so consider joining it. And then if you are in there, you could share some of your builds and stuff in the city builder section or screenshots or something. And if you got suggestions for the Discord, also let me know. Anyway, just thought I would show this. I've played 234 hours now. Of course, I'd say maybe 30 hours of that is sped up, but the rest is pretty accurate. I mean, we've done 100 hours. I've done 100 hours, obviously, on video. Um, but then all of that other 100 hours would be stuff like all the time lapses, I think. So it's kind of cool. I, I don't really know how it judges your score. It's obviously multiplying mine by the difficulty, and then it's giving you your population score, like per score per tier of population that you have. Um, it's kind of interesting. Then we can see the econ economy balance for all the different places we are. It's negative pretty much everywhere except the old world. So I think that's basically telling me that like you could have these positive, I assume, you know, but you're not getting the bang for your buck at, at the moment. You're not being very efficient with it. Um, I would imagine the Arctic and the New World is probably quite hard to get into the positive, but I don't know. And then global productivity is kind of interesting. It says based on the entire production capacity of all islands. So based on the entire production capacity we have of all of our islands, that's currently the score that the game is assigning us that we're getting out. And production top goods would be the penny farthings, probably because we have items that give us back a load of extra stuff with penny farthings. So I guess it counts for a lot. But it's not the highest efficiency rating, I don't think, in terms of productivity. Uh, global storage. That's, I guess, that seems a bit weird, but I suppose Docklands probably throws that way out of whack. Ships owned as well. Then obviously item possession completed sets. I do believe we've got every single item you can, I think. And I've at least completed all the sets at some point. But maybe, it does say based on all completed and socketed sets. So I guess... Maybe it doesn't count unless you socket the actual items in the museums and stuff. And then the socketed items we have in boats and various things. Discovered items that we've all found. Based on the total number of discovered items. So I guess there's actually there might be a few out there that we haven't got. Maybe it's a thousand total score. And uh, attractiveness island that's most attractive is sword, swords. And our panorama effect of the high life. So pretty cool. I don't know. Just like a little extra thing that they've thrown in there. This update um, that I didn't look at. I thought it was quite a cool addition. Compare stuff with your friends if you want to. Uh, right, so let's have a look. How's our shortfalls doing? Citrus is still pretty empty. To keep you going. Coffee should be getting a little bit better. We'll have it back soon enough. Let's have a look again for coffee. <laughs> Coffeffy. Um, let's see. There we go. It's on its way. I might pause this, click this, send it up here. And then when it gets here, oh, I can't set a notification, can I? Well, I'll just do this. Go up here, set a notification. When it gets there, I'll add the item that's stored here already. And that way it'll go a bit faster and everything. And that should um, help coffee never run out again, if my theories are correct. 92,000. How's everything out here, though? I think it's here is right, pretty fine, isn't it? it? It's all right, this, isn't it? Yeah, I think we've done all right. <laughs> Sorry. Beer, actually, yeah, beer. They don't have any beer. I forgot about that. That's something I got to work on too. Uh, I guess why not? Why not look into it now? So globally, beer, huge amounts of beer. Now we are selling some in Cape Trelawney, and do we have beer on a route coming from there? So New World, New World, Cape to the Old World. So beer is coming in, 150. So 300s coming in every cycle. We've got 2,700. So we just don't have a route that's doing it. Basically, because you can see we've got loads in the islands. It's just nothing is actually carrying it to uh, the island of Rush right now. So I'm just going to look up Rush and see what routes do we have going to Rush that we could bring stuff back, maybe. By the way, I fixed this route. Thanks for the comment from a user who said, hey, get rid of uh, the discarding cargo. You don't want to have that on things that are just doing one thing. Uh, so this is taking up sausages. It's taking up soap. Why not take beer as well? Why not? So let's change this so they get soap here. And now beer as well. 
accept. It's like that, isn't it? Sausage, sausage, beer, um, soap, soap, beer, beer. I think that's how it works. All right, our ship uh, has reached its destination. Do I not see it here? I saw it pop up for a second, but is it gone now? Oh, there it is. New orders. All right, dump in that coffee. Boom, 300 coffee, just before it ran out as well. Now we're gonna pick up the item that actually goes on the ship and makes it a bit better. Let's see. Movement speed 20%, no, that's not what I want. Looking for loading speed specifically again. There we go. Salima, the shipping operator. So she's fine. 60%. That's pretty damn good. So wacky in there. All right. Put this put this ship back on that coffee route. Can't find it now, man. There's so many routes. It's getting insane. There you go. Off you go. Did this just... Oh, yeah. Same thing. <laughs> Uh-oh. We're going to need a free airship. I'm actually missing an airship. I have no idea where it is. There it is. This can be the one that does it. So just grab... Um... Oh, it needs steel. I might as well take the steel from here. Screw it. Was it Hopefell? I think so. Off you go. We've got loads of steel everywhere else now. I just don't have a ship that's set up to bring it out there. Look sharp, the governor's here. Oh my god, so much stuff to do all the time. But we're making progress. We're fixing problems, making progress. It feels that way anyway. So it's just all about seeing that citrus finally come to fruition. Fruit ishin. Am I right? Thank you. Alright, so. Let's check this route again, now that it's been set up for a little while. New world to the old world. Bringing that citrus back thick. And you can see they're just about to dump it in there now. Yeah, take your time though, jeez. Alright, there you go, just another batch. This ship isn't doing anything, it's supposed to uh, dump everything and then make it play again, I guess. Boom, off you go. You got your item as well. That's nice. Alright, gotta pick up that item. Gonna have to do that. I mean, I might try and do this where I can in between episodes, but like come up here and grab some of these items. I guess the other thing I can do is have a ship that meets them halfway. Um, and brings those, brings those items down to Lusk, because that's really where all the trades happen. So this new item that we've just gotten, Hans von Schlong, basically. I actually don't see him. Where is he? Is it him? There, there we go. Hans Eichendorf, a wholesale success, refusing to be left at the margins. They say Hans knows the value of everything, except perhaps failure. 75% loading speed. I don't know if it gets much better than that. And 100% cargo reduction is pretty good too. So the trade route we have... It's this one. The ship is on its way. It's almost there. It's just turning the corner. Oh my god. Population dipping eerily, like, n dangerously close to 90,000. But anyway, yeah. After another time lapse or so, you know, I will have built up several of those items. So that should be good. Uh, there we go. Get in there, son. And then what else? Do we have any propellers that I could give you? There we go. We've got 14 of them. Perfect. All right, get back, back to the new world. This one is in transit at the moment. So that means that Citrus is being delivered successfully, which is obviously fine. But the real question is, is it constantly producing? We want it to never get backed up. That's the real big issue, right? I'm seeing it flowing right now. That looks good to me. I'm seeing good numbers at Guadalmina. How much you got? Yes, look, it's pretty practically empty, which is great. That's what we want to see it at. 
I hate the way this place is at negative one. Negative one. There must be some house that isn't... 800, 800. How the hell did I um get it in a situation... Oh, because they're... They must have um a boost from a town hall item, giving them an odd number. Yeah. I owe you, boss. Oh, you do. I oh, know they don't. What am I looking at then? Population, Guadalmina. Oh, that's happiness. My bad. So they're all at ten. Yep, they're all at ten. I don't know how a job is leaving just one though. That seems a bit odd. It must be due to some sort of um, trade union workforce thing. Probably. And I've got no Obrero household households actually, so I can't downgrade them to fix it. So cool seeing all the ships just flying in here now. There we go, we got our Camp 4 Wax. That one's full up already though. Off you go. So how's the Camp 4 Wax here as well then? That's actually full, so that's a bit of an issue. Because that means that's not producing, right? And we've got two ships doing that. Are we just full? Um, not really, but I think the ships are just full from taking this and then when this one empties out it'll trickle down and it'll kind of work out then. I think so anyway. And then the last thing to check then would be Cam4 Wax exports. We could put another ship on this uh, when we make it or if we've made it, have we? No. I'll have to do that as well. So I can do that. But yeah, it's good. It's, it's good just to see that it's not full up all the time, which means that it should get delivered here and we're back up to 95,000 now. So, they have their citrus. Oh my god, it's so low though. Come on. This is an episode all about one thing, it feels. I'm delighted to introduce our new colleague. So, we got two ships the delivering citrus. Out of control. The ship doesn't have anything on it. So, yeah, I'm going to tell you to come back up here. That one's actually pretty good. It's got two items on it, so this one doesn't. Mr. Chef. <laughs> the fire left ruins behind. Man, what's with all these fires? So much micromanaging to do when things go offline like that. Hi. Come on, Mr. Chef, where are you? Almost there. Again, propeller and some sort of loading speed item would be good. And I'm, I actually think we finished the other one then in that time. Alright, let's try this again. Items. Propeller. There he is. Get in there. No slowdown. So this one gives you cargo slowdown negative 25%. Not that much considering... We're getting a negative of 100. So I guess you could put something on that gives you a bigger movement speed. That would probably be the smarter thing to do. Like that's 25% movement speed. 25, 20, uh, that's attack. Movement speed 20. Again, 20. I don't know if there's going to be much more than 20, it seems. I thought there was one that gives you 50. 30% movement speed when activated, though. It's only when activated. Uh, 15% for Drew Journal. I think I'll just go with this. Captain Richard Moses. Why in the hell not? Reporting in. Named it after himself. Alright, so that ship is going to be really fast now. It's going to go at 15 knots. So that's 25% movement speed. And then a 75% increase on loading, and then a 100% debuff to cargo slowdown. So it's always going to move at that consistent speed. So I don't know, it seems pretty good to me. <laughs> and ultimately, all of this is just to fix the fact that we keep running out of the damn stuff. But it's got 10 in its storage right now, one on the island. So it's got at least, how long does this take? A minute? It's got 10 minutes before the next batch needs to arrive. And at that rate, I think we'll be okay. So Moses, I'm going to follow the Moses and follow it on this journey. I want to see how fast. Now, I am on triple speed here. Let's see how fast it does this. 
So it's picking up 50, 50, 50, 50, and 50. It's done just like that, and it's heading straight back now. Now, I just want to check, what are you missing? You're missing tallow. There's no tallow on the island. Oh, there's 3,000 tallow on the flipping swords island, though. So that just speaks to me that we need to um, set a limit. Limit of 500. Let that trickle down, build up again. Uh, so I need to find that ship and see where it is. There it is, the Moses doing its thing. 50, 50, 50, 50, 50. Nice. And then it should have a really fast... It should Its drop-off should be super fast coming into a Docklands again, right? So... So that, just as a curiosity, I'm just going to slow down time right here, right now. We had 10 minutes to do that. And we it only took three minutes. Maybe four, actually, because there was some in the island, actually, at the time. So maybe four, three or four minutes. If we just count the fact that it was sped up. So let's drop that off. We can't drop off anything else because we're full up. Excuse me. And there we go. 50 in the bank. So that 50 is going to get divided then into all of the different places, right? All into the... Um, everything that requires it for the different dishes that we're making. Any drugstores that might need it. They've all got their stuff now. Thousands of whale oil, thousands of coconut oil. And citrus should finally start creeping back up, slowly but surely. Anyway, that should keep our population nice and high and tight for a while. Alright, I mean, this is... I don't know if people like this kind of episode, because there wasn't much planning in it. It was more just like, okay, let's see what the problems are and try to fix them. So I'm just kind of, you know thinking out loud, trying to solve little logistical problems. But as always, if you feel like um, we could be doing things better with the trade routes, just let me know. Um, sometimes I'll agree, <laughs> but not always. Um, but yeah, so I think we did it. So the other one was glasses. New the other one was glasses. Um, so we'll just check. Did we fix all those problems, right? So let's just have a look here. Ah, this really is the high life. <laughs> so we fixed glasses, at least it seems. Coffee's back up and running. Citrus is fine. And now the it was the cognac in the billiard tables, which I have not fixed yet, because that requires building extra artisans workshops. And um, we just need more workforce for that. So we will get that. That's no problem. We'll do that eventually. I don't have all I need for my canvas. That's okay. Um, I was also going to mention, uh, I remember someone responded, a great response, to be honest, um, that factories are set up and designed to do one thing and do one thing really well. Uh, and I, I agree with that. I totally agree with the idea. This is related to the, in the previous episode, I said, wouldn't it be cool if, you know, you could say every third cycle, I want the factory to change. Now, I know that sounds really micromanaging. I'm more just being like, in the statistics screen, you can see like, oh, you're producing three tons per minute of typewriters. So it's like, okay. And that I'm producing maybe three tons of something else per minute that can be made in a um, multi-factory. Right so I said in the last episode, wouldn't it be nice if I could say, you know what, make one ton and make five tons of the other one. You know, it's like switch. So it's a factory that's switching what it's doing. So I totally agree that it is, you don't retool an entire factory to do something else every minute or whatever. <laughs> But I guess I, what I would picture it as is it's like it's doing it parallel. So it's like a factory that's making multiple things. Not that its entire production line is changing, but that the factory is a multi fact Like it's a multi-factory. It's doing multiple things at the same time. So it's like, yes, in here we have a line pumping out typewriters, but we've got another line pumping out whatever and pumping out whatever. That's how I pictured it. Um, but I guess it's just like... Really, it could just be—it's just a factory. It's like a factory that can change what it does, right? That's kind of it. But you did my whole issue with this, or kind of uh, issue is an overblown word. The whole thing about this one that tourism came out was like, you just set it and then you never change it again. So what's the point of it even changing, if it's not changing on a schedule? Like, what's the point? Because I don't know. Like, how is it different than any other building then? Because you you do just set it and then leave it. So I don't know. It just seems a bit weird to me. It doesn't really seem to fit <clears throat> with the rest of the game too much. And that's why I thought like, oh, when I initially saw them, I was like, oh, that's so cool. A factory that can change what it makes. I was like, that's great. Because that makes so much sense. But really, it's like, well, I don't know why you'd ever do that. Unless you had some sort of logic, logic mechanism that allows it to switch between goods. 
So it'd be perfect for my campaign right now if I could say like, just the way an item does it really. It's like it, the game has the logic in there for it. You know, this makes extra goods, pocket watches and graphons every certain amount of cycles. I'm just saying the building operates the way extra goods does. So it's like the building's base is just 100% productivity every minute. What does it produce? Pocket watches once every three and gramophones once every six. The game's logic is already there for it. That's what I thought the multi-factory would do. But it would require, the only difference being it required different goods at the beginning. So it's like, instead of just providing it with three things, you'd have to provide it with six or whatever the recipe would be. So you, th that means it needs more supply warehouses nearby and stuff to be constantly feeding it. So I don't know, just an idea, whatever. I thought it'd be cool. Um, but good good response though, because it is like, yeah, well, factories don't really, I mean, factories don't really change things, at least not very often. So I, I see how that makes sense. I guess it's just how you want to interpret what the actual building is doing. Um, anyways, bit of a rant there at the end, but I uh, hope you guys enjoyed the episode. I'm having a blast, even still, as the series is sort of kind of getting a bit slower paced now as we just fix and make islands look a little bit prettier. There is another cosmetic pack on the way. Um, and what else? There is a scenario coming for Anno 1800 towards the end of the year. They're doing a game jam where they're going to be giving you one island that you have to try and self-sustain without having too much of an climate impact so you can't cut down too many trees because they don't regrow or something like that or you have to you basically have to make sustainability i don't want to say exactly what it is because i don't know um so that could be a fun little scenario challenge i'm actually thinking of doing a campaign playthrough at some point when i'm done with this one just because i never did it and uh people say you should i wouldn't do all the beauty building i'm doing necessarily i'd probably just play through it but it could be kind of a fun extra thing to do and then i'm also thinking of doing extra series as well now uh total war warhammer is actually something i've been thinking of doing because I've been looking at some graphical mods and other mods that we can throw on there. I like to play games immersively, so I'd like to have a lot of zoom in moments and stuff uh, like that. And also kind of learn the lore and teach it back to you if you're not familiar with it. Because I don't know much about it myself other than what the game has kind of told me. And uh, I'm probably going to do some other sort of city builder as well. So it won't just be a war game as well. Uh, but I'm open to ideas. People do often leave recommendations. So please do feel free to do so. And I'll see if... It's a good fit for the channel. It depends as well. I don't necessarily want to play games that I'm just have no, like if I've never played anything like them before. I like to play games where it's like I'm somewhat familiar so that I'm not stuck all the time. Like I'm pretty familiar with Anno and I still get stuck, you know? So I think it would be a very slow let's play if I'm just like, oh, how does this work? Like I'm trying to learn it while recording. I don't think that's a good, that makes for good content for me personally. All right, guys. Anyways, that's going to be it. Thank you very much for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Hey guys, thank you very much for watching, and remember, if you want to support this series directly, you can click the Join button to become a channel member. Doing so will get your name in the credits, as well as loyalty badges and emotes to use in the comments. If you don't see the Join button, it means the video has been copyright claimed, but you can still join from the channel page on desktop. You can also link your account to our Discord to get a special role on there that will give you access to the Senate House and a few other perks.